right, come on, kids. We don't have that much time. Oh, girls, girls, five minutes. Oh, yes, yeah, five minutes. Come on, girls. Let's step. Accessories in order, in line. You first up, dear. Make sure those accessories are right before you go out that door. We'll be rolling in for about four minutes. Okay. All you have to do is make sure you have the correct accessories with the correct maker's dresses. Make sure to get those shoes changed and get the shine off that nose. I don't know. Where did you put it? Okay. Okay. Get get. Get the shoes. No, I got my shoes on. Get the shoes you'll need for that. Get your other slipper on. Come on, you don't have that much time. You're on, you're on. Come on. Oh, I can't. Put your shoes on. Come on. Oh, I've got to run in my stocking. Oh, God forbid. That's all right. You'll go ahead. You've got time. You've got time. Make that runway in time, girls. How did I obtain the title King of Vintage? Well, like I said, in one point of my design lab in New York City, I had my finger in everyone's collection um, in the late 90s. Uh, I literally, I could go to watch any runway show from style.com and actually say, oh, well, that's a Galanos and that's a this and that. And I can tell you because I know that I had met the design companies and the team of designers, and I had, you know, my finger in everybody. So, uh, New York Magazine approached me. Um, they were doing a story on vintage dealers in New York because vintage had become so hot. And uh, the editor in chief was Wendy Goodman, and uh, the writer was a young Indian girl named Sharma Patel. Maybe she was 22, 23. So she came to talk to me about vintage, and um, I, you know, I told her a little bit about myself, and she went back and. Wendy Goodman said, Kenny Valenti, is he still alive? She said, drop everybody and do the story on him. And they wind up doing an eight-page life story on me, which came out a week before 9-11. So, but anyway, um, it was pretty amazing, you know, and the word king of vintage came because everyone knew me, you know. I mean, like I said, I really did meet all the designers. You know, it was like a, a dream come true for me to meet you know, Gautier and, and John Galliano. I mean, no matter how crazy he is sometimes, um, he is a genius. John Galliano is, is, you know, probably the greatest living designer today in the world. I mean, you know, what he did at the House of Dior is just, it's breathtaking. I mean, I couldn't believe it. He, run, he ran that company like the master yeah, he is. John Galliano, love you. <laughs> Look at this. This is a paradise. All right. You have this huge mecca. Where am I going to go? There is nothing like this in the world. I can't, what am I going to go to LA? You can't have, Look, this is 11,000 square feet. That's it. Okay. It doesn't really, honestly, it doesn't really matter where I go. It's always going to follow me because everybody's going to know about me. We're international. We're national. I'm starting to sound like Donald Trump right now, right? Oh my God, I don't want to sound like it. But the thing is this, that there really is no other place for me to go because it's all going to come to me because there, we, there's just, there's, no, there's nothing like us. It really isn't, you know, and we want Ma Madeline, we want C. Madeline's to be the destination location. We want Miami to really, for people to come here from all over the world, and they do, they do come here. They come here before they go, go to Miami Sea Aquarium. They come here. Because they know, they know that when they come here, they see these pieces that they're never gonna see again. 
This is the place to go where they're going to see fashion history and they're going to see it in the most beautiful spot. They're going to see it in Miami where they can, the, where else are they going to go? This is beautiful. The sun, the, the sand, the beautiful atmosphere when they go out. They, I always said, not only is this the candy land of the world, they leave all of their worries behind them. They walk into this door. I mean, outside, it looks like, it doesn't look anything like where you walk in, right? From the outside, you don't realize when you walk in, it's like, whoa, all, like what I'm wearing, all of these beautiful colors. You walk in and you just leave all of those worries behind you. And then you walk in and you see, oh my God, it's nostalgia, it's everything, but you feel happy and you feel good. Where else are you gonna find that? Nowhere would see Madeline's is all about. That's what I wanted to have, a feel-good store. Fashion in Miami can be interesting. I would say if there was a dress code, it would be color, it would be pattern. Um, when I first moved here, it was a little difficult. The store had predominantly vintage, and I didn't realize I was going to come against a wall. Um, Ew, vintage, you mean old, right? <laughs> So I've worked with people and tried to incorporate that into their style, which has been really successful. You know, start with a handbag, you do a piece of jewelry, something on the body, a belt, and then getting them into full on vintage pieces. But uh, trying to emphasize you don't need to show everything all at once. Um, it's very diverse, we'll just say that. <laughs> You know, we talk about vintage fashion, it's really funny because I started um, this whole project, my first blog ever, my first kind of like dab into the fashion industry was my blog called The Google Project. And basically what I did was I would go into a Google store um, with me and my partner and we would go in and every day for a whole year, we, style, we each styled a look um, from Goodwill, from things that we found in Goodwill. So it was really interesting to like, you know, like go to every Goodwill in Miami and kind of find like those key pieces that were like really cool to style with the outfit. Some of the stuff like you would be surprised. Like we found like, I found like a Celine like crop top at Goodwill. I found like Oscar de la Renta, amazing and designer. And then also just like non-brand, like really cool, well-made pieces that don't really, you know, now we live in a world of like fast fashion, consumerism, like everything is not how it used to be. Like the quality of the pieces in vintage is just top notch, you know, like you can't get that anymore. So um, it's really interesting to find like those hidden treasures and like incorporate them into your daily outfits and something that's like wearable because a lot of people think like, oh, the boom shop at vintage, like they always look like a certain way. Like it's not really like wearable, it's more like, you look like you're wearing a costume, but it's finding a way to style it in your own way and incorporating with the pieces that you wear every day that are, you know, like easier. Like you can just wear a sweater with some jeans that you already have or styling like a really cool, like vintage dress with like, I don't know, like your everyday sneakers or something like that. And then just making stuff that works for you. Obviously like you'll find some really cool gems, but there's also like very like basic ready to wear pieces. And I think it's really fun to kind of add that element they have a black clothes have a lot of personalities it's like really well made so i really love vintage clothing and i try to like add a little bit into my style market up too miami's becoming a you know a, a fashion capital for sure i mean obviously new york and la are a lot more established because they've just been around for much longer but with everything that's going on with the art scene in miami like we have you know new designers coming in a lot of the um, production companies from LA are moving down here to do the production here. So that's really influencing like the need for, you know, like different stylists and different people who work in the, like in the different aspects of the fashion industry. So that I definitely see Miami fashion kind of exploding in the next few years for sure, because, you know, we're at this time where it's kind of moving to the next level. It's kind of like we're here right now, but it's going to be here like really soon, just because of like all of the projects that people are putting in. Fashion in Miami is evolving, um, you know, with the whole art movement, Basel coming to town, Miami Fashion Week and um, Swim Week, you know, we have a lot of attention, like an eye on Miami because of all of these different trade shows and art that's evolving like in the Wynwood area and the design district. 
And with that comes like all the creative industries, including fashion. So I think, you know, there's a lot of new boutiques coming into town and there's a lot of people doing interesting things. And, you know, we're a new city, so it's like up for grabs. Everyone's just kind of creating. The whole thought and concept started when I was really young, when I started collecting vintage clothing and accessories. Um, and actually right before uh, I finished uh, high school, I've always had my eye on the building that I'm currently located at. And uh, I've always thought it would be kind of like a, like a little niche treasure trove area, kind of like a Parisian, European-esque to it. Um, and then actually when I first opened, I wasn't located in this space. I was located in the space next door, which was about half the size. And um, I really started out really, really basic. Uh, I mean, I had a couple racks of clothes. It was only women's items and accessories. Um, and then ever since that first day, I just slowly, slowly started to get bigger and then I would have demand for men and then that's when I started, you know, collecting men's items and then I started now, uh, over about three years ago now, I have started with babies and young children. So that's when it all uh, came together. I think the vintage market here will grow, but I think it will stay very eclectic only because of our culture that we have down here. We have such a blend of of different nationalities that I don't think it will ever be toned into one kind of specific, uh, yeah, specific style um, and more refined um, because we have, of course, because we have such a dynamic um, culture and because Miami is definitely very artistic and has such an artistic influence that it'll always be, it'll always stand a little bit by itself. Well, I first started designing, I really didn't really even want to be a fashion designer. I, I told you, I just had personal style of myself because I was in the rock and roll community and I met a designer named Betsy Johnson and she asked me to help her with her first collection, which I did, and that's how I got into the industry. But uh, it was really interesting because I have to tell you that Betsy Johnson taught me about pattern making which is something amazing. She's a master pattern maker, and the woman actually sews. So many designers today don't sit at a machine. They just give a concept, or they get a vintage piece and say, this is what I want. But Betsy, at the time, actually did sit down at a machine and did take a scissor and did cut paper and make patterns. And it was fascinating to me. I was fascinated with the different kinds of machines. There's the marrow machine and the straight stitch machine and the leather machine and the stretch machine. And you know, these industrial machines are just miracle machines. And, uh, and then the handwork and the beading and whatever else you put on it. So it got me really fascinated with it that when I helped Betsy with her first show and I sort of became a fashion star overnight, um, I just went for it. I decided, well, you know what, Kenny, this is what you should do. You should get into the fashion industry. The style of the museum goes into everything. There's no personal style to the museum because I really want to express so many things in the museum. Um, you know, I did a show though, um, six months ago called Made in Miami, because when I came here four years ago full time and took this space in the Windwood area, I was so intrigued by the warehouses and what exactly happened here. So I started researching who the local designers were and I did a show called Made in Miami and found, I mean, did you know that Lily Pulitzer manufactured her clothing here between 1962 and 1982 when she sold the company right here in Wynwood? Every Lily Pulitzer dress was made here. Um, and also there was somebody called Mr. Dino and there was uh, Miss Jane of Miami. There were so many names of people and I started collecting them. I started, I live in Miami Beach, so I, there's a lot of older women that I said, hey, you have anything with a Made in Miami label on it? So I acquired so many things and it's fascinating. Um, to see what a thriving business this was, the Wynwood area. Actually, if you go on uh, Biscayne and 29th Street, in front of Out of the Closet Thrift Shop, there is a sign that says Fashion District and an arrow pointing on 29th Street. So that's sort of the remnants of it. I mean, it was, it was called, always called the Fashion District. This, you're in the Fashion District. 
So uh, I hope to see, you know, as your question was, you know, what do I think about Miami and the fashion industry? Look what's going on here. And walking distance now we have Hermes, Dior, Saint Laurent, you know, uh, Tublo, Cartier. I mean, it's completely wild, you know, what's going on in the Miami area. Clothing always says a little something about you before you open your mouth. Um, so you know they're playful or you know they're classic. You know, it's conveying something about you without you having to say it work. Fashion to me is something, it's, it's kind of like a, a language on its own. Like you put on a shirt and you know, you can roll up the sleeves, you know, can button up the collar all the way and then all of a sudden you have this persona for the day. Like fashion for me is a form of communication, it's a way of telling people like this is who I am and you don't even have to introduce yourself. It's kind of just like first impression, like there you are. So it's, it's really something fun for like interaction with people. Um, I love to wear something different that people are going to be like, what is she wearing? Like I think that's so fun because all of a sudden like you're like made an impact on someone's day because of what you wore. So fashion to me is kind of like something that I layer into my life to communicate with others. I would say because Miami is known as kind of the party happening event city where there's always constantly something going on, um, I think people are always trying to stand up and be different and trying to get attention from all different uh, medias, either if it's, you know, obviously they want photographers, they want social media, they want to, you know, meet uh, some kind of designer, it's a way of of shouting out and be like, hey, look at me, like I'm standing out, I'm not like, you know, everybody else is. It has been very difficult to develop the Miami people to under really understand what fashion is really all about. But it has changed and little by little we see it evolving. And I see even in the last 14 years that I have been here that little by little that the people that are here, whether it's Brazilian, whether it's Russian, whether it's, you know, whether it's South American, I should say, whether it's always been New Yorkers. New Yorkers always get vintage. They always get fashion. They always L.A. people. Europeans always get it. But I see little by little, everything is evolving and they're starting to understand it. And fashion is now beginning to evolve and it's becoming a passion for everyone. So now I'm starting to see that it's becoming much more than it has been ever. And I do feel very strongly that if we give it a little bit more time, that it will be. This will be much more fashion capital of the world than it has been in the past. So I am very hopeful that we will take a stand and it will take a place in fashion. <laughs>